I'm in one of the most remote, untouched forests of Madagascar, wading into murky waters in hopes of finding an undisturbed footprint or any proof of the existence of the allegedly extinct dwarf hippo. I've got like three inches of visibility. Even if there was a hippo, I wouldn't be able to see him, you know, more than this far in front of my face. Which is great for a crocodile that wants to pull a guy. This is not a good tactic. It's probably not worth the risk either. Do you have any better ideas? Yeah, I got an idea. I got something you're gonna like. Start with that. <laughs> and take that. Look at this. So here's the idea. Yeah, I'm listening. I've worked with scientists who've used croc cams to monitor crocodiles, right? Right. This is a hippo cam, or it's going to be once Mitchell helps us out. I'm gonna mount this head, can I see that? Yeah. Onto this speedboat, and then have Mitch rig it with a camera. We'll hopefully invoke like a territorial response from a hippo. And you know, this would be, there's a crocodile there right now. Look at that, look at that guys, look. Right where I was, there's a croc. That would have been me if I didn't there for three more minutes. How many plastic animals have you mounted with cameras, Mitch? <laughs> Working with forest? <laughs> <laughs> Beauty. That's awesome. Swamp vision. Good. Yep, that'll do the trick, I'd say. Hippos are extremely territorial. They're extremely aggressive. If there's one hippo that's dominating this little watering hole, when he or she sees this decoy, the theory is it will come out to either attack it or mate with it. Now I just need my new remote-controlled buddy here to find us some conclusive evidence. Hey, Forrest. Yeah? It doesn't look like it's moving anymore. No, it doesn't feel like it's moving. I think we're either out of range or the battery's died. The hippo cam gave me about 30 minutes, but that's it. Still no dwarf hippo. Is that water? Uh, yeah, that looks like water to me. Looks like a, some kind of stream. It's the middle of the day. If there's a hippo, he's gonna be sunk in that river. So I say we just bring the drone in and head over there. Come on home. Let's do it. It's just good to see some water out here. Yes. You can see it's utilized, though. I mean, this is yeah. human activity all over. You can see there's just tracks yeah. everywhere. Human, goat, there's lemur, there's everything. In this soft substrate, any tracks, any spore, any footprints are going to stand out like a sore thumb. Some trail down here. Courtney, what's that right there? What's this? Ooh, nice. This is a deposit. Oh, there's another, there. That could be cow. That cannot be cow, look. Oh my gosh. Yeah, do you have any carnivorous cows? That's a tusk. It's not one of the main incisors, it's one of the small ones. So this is actually really, really amazing. Hey, give me a minute here, I'm having a moment. <laughs> the only other tusked animal in this region is a bush pig but theirs are much longer and thinner than this incisor. It's likely recent based on how close it was to the surface. I have to remind myself that in a well-traveled area like this, it could have been put here by a human, but it certainly seems our dwarf hippo is a possible source. The thing is the water's receded more now than ever with this big drought, and so these things are exposed. So if a hippo died here, these remains lay in this anoxic mud for a hundred years, and they're getting exposed for the first time. There could be a whole skeleton or skull or femur or anything in there. Um, I think as revolting as this water is, it's something we probably have to investigate a little further. After you, Forrest. Um, yeah, I thought you were gonna say that. The biological content of this muck is off the charts. Like a chef making a saucy reduction, the sun has reduced this river to a trickle, mashing together the remnants of everything it contained. Yeah, it's pretty sticky. Well, at least it's soft. It's disgusting. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff right here. Yeah. Are you reaching into the mud? I am. Last time I was in Madagascar, 
I had to face my fear of heights, suspended over 100 feet in the air in search of lemurs. After two hours in this heat and muck, I'd gladly go back. I don't know, I feel something sharp. <laughs> Hard, but it's really buried. There it comes. Got it? Yeah, here it comes. Hey, look at that! Holy <laughs> That's a hippo jaw. Dad. Look at that! Hold that for a second. It's in beautiful condition, Doris. Look at that. Look. That's, guys. This tusk is a perfect fit. It's incredible. This discovery just changed history. This jawbone is not very old. Could we be in a recent graveyard? There could be more, there could be yes. legs or, or like, I mean, anything in here. Okay. I'm gonna keep digging around in yeah, the Yeah, go for it. Right over where you are. This is getting pretty deep. Okay, this might be the best out ever. Hold on. This is incredible. Look at going on. That's insane. Look, the tusks are still there. I can't the molars are still there. The cranium's intact. I mean, we do stuff like this all the time. We pick through the muck. You step on something sharp, the last thing you think is that it's gonna be, you know, the canine of an extinct dwarf hippo. This is amazing. I'm sorry, but you're never allowed to leave Madagascar again. <laughs> this is <laughs> insane. Time. I mean, we gotta bag this up. We gotta take it back to Tana, get it tested. See, yeah, I mean, this is, I, there's what, several hundred of these in collection ever? Very likely fewer. This is an animal that was thought to have gone extinct a thousand years ago. This isn't a story, this isn't a fable, this is fact. This is a non-fossilized skull of a dwarf hippo right here in Madagascar that we're holding, that we found, that is invaluable evidence and could change our entire understanding of this species. Woo! Like dwarf hippo? <laughs>